All right guys, welcome back to an Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper. Today I've got a special one for you. I've got Zach from An American Homestead. We're actually out at his property today. Had some friends in town visiting who are changing up their lifestyle to go live a more homesteading lifestyle. So they asked if they could come down and check out our property a bit. And I happen to be coming over here to drop off some guinea fowl keats. What do you guys use those for? We love guineas. They are like nature's expendable commodity. They get rid of all the ticks and chiggers on a homestead. Okay. Yeah. So we came, we had some extra ones, came to drop some off for him and said, you know, while I'm out here, I'll bring my friends, let them take a look at this property. So uh, Tim's giving them a bit of a tour right now. And uh, just check out the lay of the land for a couple different properties as they kind of create their own because they're starting pretty much from scratch, which mm -hmm. is a good way to start if you're willing to put forth the effort, the sweat mm -hmm. equity. But we wanted to record this video for a bit now, and it's really just talking about the role that eschatology plays in your choice to homestead. Now, eschatology means just the study of end time events as revealed in the Bible, as revealed in scripture. And one point I wanna make out about scripture is, is God doesn't make guesses. He doesn't, I mean, prophecies has been diminished so much because it's applied to Nostradamus, it's replied to all these other people making prophecies, that what God really has is he sees the future before it happens, he exists outside the realm of time, so he makes these promises of what's coming down the pipeline. And I think a lot of people's eschatology, realizing how end time events are gonna play out, got really put on the fast track last year. Yeah. And they realized, you know what? We might be a little farther along than I thought. And for me personally, understanding what God says is happening one day upon this earth, maybe in my generation, maybe in my children's, made me think, I need to be homesteading. Mm -hmm. And you also had a role that Absolutely. This is something that was really big for our family. We were like looking at the world around us and it's at the end of Mark chapter 13 where the Messiah says to watch. Okay, he just says to watch. I say to, I say to you what I say to all, watch. Oh. So it's impossible to watch without speculating about what it is you're watching. So we can all speculate about what it is we're watching. We can look around the world. We can, we can basically armchair quarterback all the world's problems and try to solve them in our head. But the reality is he's in control and we're watching this, and we're trying to piece these things together with uh, prophecies that we read about in Revelation or uh, Matthew chapter 24 or in Daniel. So, all, but all we can do is watch. That's all we can really do. So, as we're watching, we can try to prepare and make sure our families are gonna go through some of these times that we're seeing possibly coming and go through with the best possible, best possible scenario for our family's outcome. And so a lot of times it means getting out a homestead, preparing a place where we can grow food still, despite the world's interruptions, grow food still, raise our family still, and do so without maybe some of the dangers that may exist in other parts of the world or, or in the country. Right, and a couple things that are promised to happen in the future. We're gonna see hyperinflation. Right. You're gonna see famines. Yep. You're gonna see times when people will not be able to buy or sell without receiving a mark. It's promised, and guess what? He says you can't. He says, you can't take that. Mm -hmm. He says, if you're mine, you're not gonna. Mm -hmm. So part of our stuff is we were understanding these things from scripture. Once we realized that the pre-tribulational rapture is just like a false you know, prosperity gospel what? given to people, it is. <laughs> Everyone thinks they're gonna be magically whisked away. And if I was, I wouldn't care too much. That'd be great. But if I realize that there's this man coming who's gonna be an evil ruler upon this world, he's gonna make war with the saints of God. Well, everyone wants to be a saint of God. Believers do, except for not then. Yeah, you yeah, know, except for yeah. not then. There's so many parts of our, our Bible that's, oh, no, that's just for the Jews. That's just for whatever. It, once all that fell apart, and I learned a couple things like God doesn't use the term the tribulation the way that man does. Check your New Testament. It shows up once. It says mm -hmm. the tribulation of those days, meaning there's tribulation of other days. Mm -hmm. He talks about the time of his end time wrath, the day of the Lord, stuff like that. I wrote a whole book just trying to simply show from scripture that's actually a lie. Realize what God really says. And I also wrote another book called Why We Homestead, which the part I left out and I just absentmindedly forgot it at the time, you know, that it was one of the factors, was that I know what's gonna happen. Right. I know what God promises, therefore we've chosen the homestead. Absolutely, this is something that we know is coming. So how do I, uh, 1 Timothy 5, 8 says, he who does not provide for his own family is worse than an infidel. So it's like, how can you, I watch what's going on in the world today and be like, ah, no big deal. I'm just going to continue to work for my job, work for my 401k, not worry about, you know, the, the hard times that may be coming or the hard times I'm seeing right in front of my face, the, the rioting and the looting and all the, the sin and all the nonsense that's going on around me. To not pay attention to that, 
yikes, it kind of qualifies you for that verse. Right. And I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the guy who can prepare and, 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 and set an example for my kids and try to, you know, better a place for them so that we can raise our family and maybe they can raise their families one day. Yeah, maybe. That's one thing too I realized a while ago. I might not exactly get to have grandchildren, great-grandchildren, depending on how the world plays out. That's just possible. Um, but as we think about things too, for here's one for you. You know, if you talk about hyperinflation, it's happened before, it's gonna happen again. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use an example of an apple. Mm -hmm. So right now, what's an apple cost? I don't know. Less than a buck usually. Yeah. So under hyperinflation, this apple that costs less than a buck, what, what could that run? 20 grand. 20 grand, that's possible. You used to, do you still have one of the Zimbabwe dollars? I used to, I did a video on it earlier today. Actually. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah, well I, I, don't, I think I have one or two laying around, but I bought a bunch of these Zimbabwe dollars, they were a hundred trillion dollar bills. hundred trillion dollars? One hundred trillion dollars. That sounds almost as bad as America's debt. Yeah. That's crazy number. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Well, right now we have a hundred trillion dollars in unfunded li liabilities. That's our real debt. The national debt says 30 trillion, but really it's about a hundred trillion when it comes to unfunded liabilities. That is a debt that can't be paid. And there was a wise man who once said a debt that can't be paid won't be paid. And so the only way you get rid of that debt is to inflate your money to the point where you can pay off that debt with just printed dollars. So if an apple costs 20 grand, there's no, it's easy to pay off a hundred trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities when the money means nothing. Right. And that's what they'll do. That's what history has shown that country has, countries have done time and time and time again uh, when, once this occurs. Whenever you have a government fiat that's not based on a gold or silver standard, it usually takes about 50 years maximum, 50, 60 years for that country's fiat to collapse. 1971 and today is 2021. That's 50 years of when our country officially went into a fiat, full fiat standard. So we're right on schedule, according yeah. to history. According yeah. to what history has shown us over and over again, we're right on schedule. And they're really trying to do a good job at it too. If you really look at what's happening, when your money's not backed by anything, you don't need the gold to make another dollar. Money used to say good for $20 in silver. Yeah. Where I could take the paper that was just a representation of the real physical thing, so I didn't have to carry the real physical thing around me, walk into the bank, give it to them, they give me the real physical thing. There's no real physical thing right now. There isn't, and they just print as much as they want, and they give it out. And I'll tell you what, watch how people behave when they're just given a green light. You remove a little bit of man's um, authority and supervision and police or whatever. Yeah. They go crazy and loot and riot and steal everything, but they're just stealing, you know, Gucci handbags and whatever fashion clothes they want and stuff. Imagine when their belly's hungry. Imagine how they're gonna behave when they can't drink or eat. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, you back up a sewer system in a city, yeah. There's not going to be clean water anywhere very quickly and the point with the apple is, sure, you could buy an apple for less than a buck today. Let's say two years from now we are under hyperinflation. Let's say it costs 20 grand. Guess what happens on my property? The same apple I can walk out and pick from a tree today, I can walk out two years from now and it's got friends. Yeah, yeah. There's more. Uh -huh. And they, it doesn't cost me any more to pick it. It's still there and readily available. So homesteading, even with an apple tree, means I can't really sit there in an apartment building, which unfortunately I think is a type of trap. I think they're kind of like filing cabinets for people. You guys might consider that to be kind of derogatory, <laughs> but if you look at it, it's a filing cabinet for people. Park your cars here and just stack you guys, follow you away, live your little life in these couple, you know, dimensions. And pay your taxes. You know, when the world is perfect, it was a man and his wife in a garden with some animals. Mm -hmm. And you watch how much we've screwed it up from there, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yep. But that was the perfect world. There's still a taste of that that we can experience these days. And because we know the promises of what God says, we know how to prepare for some of that. No one knew something was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. He was told to build an ark. He didn't have to prepare. We touched on being prepared in a previous video we did. But he chose to obey God, he chose to prepare. He said, this has been revealed to me. This is the future. If I do things now, I can preserve the life of myself and my family. Right. 1971, we mentioned that. 1960, we had the court case of Madeline Murray O'Hare, which took the curriculum of the Bible out of schools. And now you have a number of generations that have existed since 1960, and you've taken away the money standard, and you mentioned the moral authority. Now we have an entire number of generations who have no idea that it's wrong to steal, it's no, they have no idea it's wrong to murder. They have no idea it's wrong to commit adultery. And they have no idea, they've never heard the concept of love your neighbor as yourself. Things that were taught as curriculum in public school systems before 1960, and then were once removed. So you take that, now you have an entire number of generations that are completely removed of a moral standard, and you have a standard of economy that's about to collapse. That is a recipe for absolute, complete 
catastrophe, disaster. Death, mayhem, disaster. You know, if the foundation be removed, what can the righteous do? That was the foundation that man was supposed to live God's way. Mm -hmm. And we've created a mess down here. It's going to get worse. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows what's coming. And he's kind enough to warn us. But will we heed the warning? What's said of, uh, you know, man in the Bible? It says that the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom is to fear mm, God, fear to God. take him seriously. Yep. And hopefully more and more people are as we're going on. We have, now we have generations of people who don't who not fear God, but they don't even know God. They don't even know that God exists. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're just a couple examples of people who've chosen to not deny the fact that there is a creator. Pretending he's not there helps people kind of cope with life. <laughs> but then if somebody says God or has the Ten Commandments displayed in public or something like that, then they freak out because it's hard to live a lie mm -hmm. when you're constantly exposed to the evidence that your lie is a lie and it's not reality. But... We receive that truth. We understand creation comes from a creator. We understand that the God of the Bible is the one who is the one true living God. And we've studied the scriptures. We're continuing to. Mm -hmm. His ways are high above ours. But what we see, we hold ourselves accountable to do something about. And that led us both away from the cities. It led us both to invest in our lifestyle in such mm -hmm. a way that we can be present in the life of our mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. and, and to home educate our children, right. to teach them the things that have been removed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if it's my job as a godly parent to teach my children his ways, and if I send my children to where he's not allowed mm -hmm. for the vast majority of their waking hours, I can't, I can't justify that. No. I can't justify that. And I, I shouldn't be surprised of the end result of that if I try it. Right. You know, I think uh, Body Bacham Jr. once said, if you keep sending your children to Caesar to be educated, don't be surprised when they come home as Romans. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, but people don't think about that. Exactly. No, they don't. They don't. It's sad. The reality is there's a whole mess of stuff that's going on right now. And when you look at eschatology, you look at the Bible, you're trying to figure it out. All you can do is prepare and watch, just like what he tells us to do, to watch. And so what happens after that? I don't know. you got to make the steps necessary to, to be a good watchman. Right. And then prepare and then let him understand that he is in control and let him be in control. And realize that you don't really have any control. All you can do is be a watchman and watch. And then prepare in your little world the things that you know you have the ability to prepare for. That's it. Right. And that's, that's, what, that's where faith comes from. Faith. I'll tell you what. In the end, do you plan on making it out of here alive? No. I don't plan on making no. it out of here alive, point Once for a man to die, everyone's yeah. going to get that ticket punched. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm living for eternity in the present because I know that that's unavoidable. Right. Right. But there's a lot of things that I can do here in the present right. based on what I know is coming mm -hmm. that can prepare myself, my wife, my children, my friends and family, and whosoever will listen, right. to not suffer, suffer an unnecessary, avoidable death. Right. For what a lot of people spend on a week's rent in a place they will never own, I bought property. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For what a lot of people spend in a week's rent that they will never own, you can start building a house, you can do things. You have to shift your paradigm, shift your, uh, you know, your mindset about what life is, because you're going to be trained. You know who controls a lot of the uh, Board of Education stuff, a lot of stuff that gets directed in the public school system? It's the Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they want you to fill one of the slots in the predetermined you know, slots of society to just do some job, and that's where you're going to serve out your life. Right. Yep, exactly. They have you in a filing cabinet. I love that analogy. It is. <laughs> it, it really is. Some of them are hard to tell apart, too. If I live there... I mean, I know they have different numbers on the door, but I'd probably walk into the wrong person's house. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> There's no difference. That's so, hilarious. guys, that's just a little bit of it. Again, what do you often say on your other channel? Go home and Go read, home your read your Bible. Go home and read your Bibles. Honestly, that's one of the best things you can do. Um, God does have a message for you. Yep. It's contained within his scripture. He sent it here for you. And you have to prepare for eternity. Once you're, you know, got that figured out, figure out what to do here to avoid some of the stuff that's gonna happen coming forward. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, when, when things cost eight times as much, and I still have seeds in the garden, that's one thing I was gonna to mention too. It talks about a time you're not gonna be able to buy or sell. That's a bad time to try to get started. Mm -hmm. Anything that I pretty much can't create or grow, I kinda, oh, you're throwing that away? Yeah, I'll take that, because I can't grow that or you know whatever. But even last year, they weren't selling seeds in places. Yeah, yeah. It was illegal to buy seeds. It was illegal to buy fishing lures. That was a bad time to start trying to fish or try to start trying to garden. Yeah. He saves a lot of his seeds. I save a lot of my seeds. I'm not gonna need to buy them again. In fact, he's sold seeds. I've sold seeds. We have extra, you know, mm -hmm. to sell, to share, to do these things. 
And then when I can't buy or sell even a sandwich, good. Yeah. I'll eat some kale. I'll eat some carp. Yeah. <laughs> carp. We got a good video about that. I'll eat some gar. You know, we'll eat some things like that. And life will continue. Right. Until we reach that inevitable end here. Absolutely. Any final things? That's about it. That's good. It was good. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I'll link Zach's channel uh, in the description here. We've made some good stuff before. I'll show you one about uh, the carp adventures we've that had. That was awesome. We got to do that again. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully next year will be better. <laughs> we'll work on your aim a bit and we'll just go from there. Yeah, I need to work on my aim a little bit. <laughs> so guys, appreciate you for watching. Feel free to give the video a like, leave a comment. Anything else that you have thoughts about this, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to check it out. Feel free to check out his channels. They're definitely worthwhile. And uh, we've learned a lot from you over the years. And even Thanks. before we started living this lifestyle. My wife, you know, was watching your channel and That's stuff. That's awesome. And uh, learning things that we could apply even in the city. Yeah. Even, you know, on a quarter acre, even with what we were doing, that then, you know, we got a little bit more freedom to do as we see fit now. What's this freedom for? This is a root cellar that we're building and I've already got some potatoes in there. I got some onions in there, some harvest we have harvested this year. Getting ready to put a bunch of squash in there. I've got tons of squash coming up. Um, probably some, put some winter cabbage. I'm going to plant cabbage again for the winter. That'll, that'll go in here uh, before it gets freezing temperature. So I've got a lot of, got a lot of wine in there. So we have, we, there's a 90 acre vineyard not far from here. We go harvest grapes. So it's like, there's lots of stuff that's going to go in here and it's food, you know, it's a food. So you can make like your own little grocery store, your own little produce section it right is. at home from I your own it. yard. I'm going to try to do a, a cheese cave in there too. Like I can make cheese and, 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 yeah. and do sharp cheddars and things like that. Absolutely. So we got, this is something that we've been wanting to do for a long time in the homestead is to build a root cellar, uh, to better preserve the things that we grow for a longer period of time. I got to go home and pour the lid on mine. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. Yeah, no problem. Pop out. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button. Thumbs up.